And welcome to Press Pass Live, the off-season edition. That is right, the OMFL is now past free agency. The checkbooks have been opened, the checks have been written, and probably most of them have been cashed by now. And we are preparing to get ready for the draft and to get you ready. We want to recap the off-season. And to do that, let me bring in my two buddies, Huday and D. Wayne. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on, Nate? Doing good, my friends. It's late night. It's 10 o'clock. It's been a long day, but we want to cover free agency because it was it was lathered up. It was ready to go. People were foaming at the mouth. Every night I was getting harassed that I should be advancing this thing, and I'm glad it is over. So let's just jump right into it. Tell me, and I'll let you guys go ahead and decide who goes first, but give me who you think did really well in this free agent period who really caught your eye as a team that improved dramatically this past off season uh in my opinion uh it's it's not the the sexy pick but i, I think i think mo did a really good job with the seahawks he needed uh, a lot of pieces he had a lot of holes he ended up signing 16 players out of free agency um and I didn't even know. And some of them were pretty good. I think he picked up Alden Smith or a couple other uh, big name guys on really cheap contracts. So I think that team's going to look a lot different. Um, another guy that decept- deceptively did a good job was the Browns. Uh, I thought he was going to come out spending huge money. Um, but as I looked over his list, he also signed 16 players, none of which I even noticed. So, I mean, if you can get some good players on cheap contracts, especially that many, uh, you're, you're definitely doing something. Oh, yeah, you hit it, you hit it on the point with uh, uh, the Seahawks. Uh, man, they made – and actually, they, they were kind of deceptively quiet the first round or so of free agency. But this last one, it really picked up. And uh, for a team, like I said, it was, it was kind of um, – I don't want to say depleted, but he was – his team last year didn't have quite up to par – all around, um, his team wasn't quite up to par. What well, he made up for it this offseason, I think he's plugged nearly every hole on his team. Um, he beat my Falcons out on a few of them. I'm still kind of salty about a few players, um, but yeah, I, I would tell you one intriguing signing uh, to me was, and I, if, if I'm wrong, one of y'all let me know. Um, Big Ben went to uh, Bears. Bingo. Bears. That's what I'm intrigued by. Um, yep. and first, first off, I hate that he's in NFC. I don't want to see Big Ben in NFC. Um, and as, as, as open age as he is, man, he's still producing. And in that offense with the uh, with the Bears, that could be a real scary addition to the NFC. Yeah, the Bears uh, were a team that was really active in free agency. Um, the Saints were another team that was really quietly active in free agency. The Carolina Panthers were one of those teams that were really quiet. Um, I I have to think to, for the for me the team that did, in my opinion, one of the best jobs. Of course, Houday was another team that just went out and signed some really big time studs to a defense that was already playing lights out last season. But the Houston Texans really impressed me. I was going to brag on Hude, but the Houston Texans really went out there and they picked up some really high quality guys. I mean, they picked up some draft picks. They picked up David Johnson to come in there and run behind that offensive line that he's rebuilding. I mean, that team really went out there and found the needs that they needed to improve. And I think that David Johnson is going to be a monster over there. We miss him here in Arizona, um, just money-wise, yeah, you know, he wanted a five-year contract. We had to trade him away, but money-wise, we couldn't even go in after him in free agency. So, I really like what the Houston Texans done. Let's talk about the flip side of free agency. Who's a team that you expected to see more from that you really didn't see a lot of action from? Well, going into it, there were a lot of teams. Uh, I think I had maybe. 30 mil in cap. There were a lot of teams like that, like uh, teams with 40, 50 million. One of those teams that had a lot of money uh, were the New York Giants. Um, 
had 30 plus million, still have around 30 million. They only signed one player out of free agency, and it was a kicker. And the funny thing is, the kicker is the same as the kicker they already had. It's not really a better kicker, and it just kind of surprised me. Um, having that much money, I figured he'd he'd come in and, and revamp that team. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you talk about $30 million in cap room for the Giants. Uh, this might have been the the loaded off season. I think there's so many teams with so much money. Um, somebody was going to be lost out. Somebody was going to be the, the loser on the end of it because, you know, some people just don't win the bid. Um, that's a tough call. Um, I'll tell you one team who uh, – I, I hate to say it like that. Honestly, I was disappointed in myself this year. I see a lot of teams reloading. Um, I was just looking at the, the Buccaneers, who are a rival of mine, picked up four, five, six playmakers in the offseason. Um, it's, it's hard for me to pin down a one team. Um, I think there's a couple losers this year. But if I had to pick one, and um, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, um, I, and I don't know if he did it strategically or not, but to me, um, Brady and the Jaguars. Um, yeah. Quite a few players were like he was rebidding on his own players, and to me, I don't know if it's uh, it, to me he some of them got a little, I guess, a little pricey, and some of them he didn't get back, and uh, I don't know if that was his strategy was to uh, you know revamp and keep some of the same guys, and I think it I think it backfired a little bit. Like I, said, I hope uh, Brady, you don't take that personal. If I'm wrong, you can uh, let me know, but I just I think that that strategy backfired a little bit. There were a lot of teams. I, I think we could have spent a whole lot more time, but we're not going to do that just because it's getting late at night. We want to make this short and sweet. Could have spent a lot of time on teams that did really well. I mean, even the 49ers, the Lions had a very good all season. But when we think about teams that you expect it more from, I think you you both hit two very good ones on the head. Uh, the Giants um, just didn't go out there and spend a lot of money. One could argue, though, they already had – a very good team. Um, and Nolan, of course, is a very, very good player. I expected him to go out and, and spend some money on a free safety or strong safety. Maybe he's just comfortable with what he has. Uh, another team, I think guy, you guys hit it with Brady. Um, I expected more from him. He really just went after a couple of his own guys that he was losing. But here's a team that no one has mentioned tonight that I really expected to see a lot more from. A team that had a very, very, very down year and a team that really should have expected more of themselves. The Oakland Raiders, they did absolutely nothing this past offseason after uh, you know, having a two or three win season, whatever it was. And this was a team that was, I can't remember if they were in the playoffs or fighting for the playoffs, but they were right there in the AFC. And then they had this really down season and and they just came back and did nothing. They just laid an egg this past off season. They didn't really try to improve their team. I, I don't even remember seeing any signings from them, just them losing players. And so maybe they just signed a bunch of their own guys back and they never really had to worry about free agency and they're just planning on rebuilding through the draft. But the Oakland Raiders, I think, missed on an opportunity to really rebuild that team. And that was a team I really expected to see more from. So just give me your overall thoughts. Free agency now is over. The money's been spent. We've got to see what it looked like and, and kind of what our rules look like that got us to this point. Just want to get your guys' overall thoughts. Failure, success, needs improvement. What do you, what do you think about the overall experience of free agency for Season 71? I thought the, the experience itself was great. Uh you know, I only signed maybe five, six players, but, you know, they were pretty big. Uh, there were a lot of big names out there, and I had more fun this off season than I had in the previous two put together. Uh, just, you know, everybody wanted to advance that first night. You know, you got 20, 25 guys in chat. Everybody's on Madden. You know, that's that's the stuff we're after. You know, just get everybody together to hang out and have a good time. I, I think it was successful. And I think the plan um, that, you know, you've kind of put in place with the – nobody likes it when a player comes up, he wants five years, you have to let him walk. 
well, this, over time, it's worked because that's what's allowed us to have a successful free agency. Um, and I think a lot of people understand that now. So I, I would say it's definitely a success. You couldn't have said it any better than he just said it. Um, I was kind of like him, the five-year rule. Hated it. Hated it when I first came in um, because of the fact that I was going to lose some players myself. But I see the greater good in it. Um, because, like I said, this off season was as fun and hectic as it could have been. There are so many stars, younger and older ones, in free agent market. And like I said, it, it, you had 25 people. You had people that I, man, I ain't seen in the chat, seen talking in weeks. We're in the chat talking about the free agency. And so it got everybody's, like I guess say, everybody's blood pumping, got everybody excited. And um, like I said, it's, 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 it's such a good build up right for the draft because it's just all carrying over. Everybody's excited. And, uh, yeah, I like it. I, I think I think the way, it, especially this are me going into season four for this Madden, um, I think it's a great build up. Like I said, you got teams now that have reloaded teams that maybe were on the lower uh, tier. And they, they they reloaded and they could they could make a big splash this year and uh, yeah like like who they say it was a lot of fun this off season. I'll say this as commissioner, it was a huge success. You guys hit it on the head. Just the excitement, the energy, um, the build up, the talk, the anticipation. It was all there. It 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 had all the the great makings of a good off season and guys being super plugged in. There was a lot of action. You didn't even have that many teams that avoided everything. Like there were there were a lot of teams that were very active. But I'll also say this, this is the the comment, this is the thought process. And you guys can rebottle me if you'd like, but I thought that this draft or draft class system made this free agency class was very overhyped as an owner. Um, I will say it was very loaded at running back. There were a lot of running backs out there, and if you needed a running back, this was the free agent period to go out there, and you could. I mean, you could get a very, very good running back on the dirt cheap this free agency period. Uh, I know the Browns ended up finally moving Gurley, but the reason I pulled out of the Gurley sweepstakes was because there were just so many good running backs. Um, I think also defensive or uh, outside linebacker they had some very good outside linebackers in this free agent period but overall I thought from top to bottom it was very overrated and guys were getting very excited about names that they seen but honestly our our rules worked it it caused people to cut that 90 that 85 to 90 to 95 overall player who was in their 30, 31, 32, 33 age because they just couldn't afford to keep them or they were asking for too big of a contract. And that's what we've seen here, which is why I thought that it was a little overhyped and people were a little too excited about something that just wasn't there. Running backs, yes, it was very deep. Outside of running backs, though, I thought that it was just an overhyped draft class. So that was kind of what I've been saving uh, I, I know that a lot of people were so pumped and so excited about this this free agent class, but I thought it was a lot to do about nothing. It was very, very top-heavy. And then there were a lot of big names that probably got some very fat contracts that, you know, we'll see if it works out in a year or two as we kind of wrap up this Madden. Oh, no, I, I agree with you uh, 100%. Uh, I think a lot of what we're seeing is, you know, the players that everybody's attached to now on their favorite teams that they love, but we're two or three seasons ahead of, of where it is in real life. So, you know, uh, I'll, for example, I let three guys walk that were around 90 overall. Um, I, and I way overpaid one of them to get them back. You know, it's just, it's the names that people gravitate towards and they really love. Um, so it seemed a lot better than it was because at the end of the day, they're just, you know, pictures and Plato people with, you know, numbers put in a computer system. Um, but I, I think, I think it's good for the league and uh, I'm glad everybody got excited about it. It's such a tough way to look at it like that. I, I know as a, as you, you're not supposed to get attached to the Plato players and names. Um, but everybody knows I, I have players I like, um, but yeah, it, it was it was a lot of like I said the, the, that age where everybody the, the players are starting to decline, 
um, a lot of names, and I was one. I bought into a few guys that I'm, I was a fan of more so than a than I guess you'd say than a game changer for me. Um, but like I said, it, it it all season like this is where you, you I guess you get to see the true GM skills for a couple guys because you'll see the guys that buy into the names, buy into the hype, or guys that actually buy in and and um, get I guess you say get fillers for their team, get t- nice stuff they do need and kind of uh, resist the temptation to fall for the, the big name. But overall, it was fun, though. It was really no, fun. It, overall, it was, a, it was a, a huge success, and I hope that we have many more like that. Play-Doh Man makes me sound like something my wife would say to me. That, I just thought that was <laughs> funny to pick that up. So we've talked about free agency. We've talked about the teams that we like and, and teams that we expected to see more from. Let's turn our attention to the draft. We're kind of sitting in that pre-draft opportunity for guys to do some last second scouting Um, we're putting together a draft board for everybody right now that'll have names and combine stats filled in for you Um, and then you can go in and fill in your scouting that you've done on a spreadsheet just to have access to something like that but let's talk about the draft just give me your overall thoughts strengths weaknesses areas that you're looking forward to what do you think about the draft for season 71 I think overall it's uh it's very deep in skill positions. Uh I think we got like maybe six quarterbacks in the first round, six wide receivers in the first round. Uh if you you know, it's one of those drafts that you every this would be ideal to have the very first season. You know, yeah. we have a little bit less time to develop these guys. Um so you really want to hit that that quick, that superstar player, if you can, you know, because you spend a first round pick on a slow development quarterback and he's all you got, you're, you're in trouble. Um, so yeah, I think quarterback wide receiver is going to be the strengths. Um, running backs a little weak. I think, you know, I, I didn't see any real first round talent. Um, I didn't really even see a lot of those speed guys, uh, like, uh, good got, uh, or I'm sorry, priest got out of good, up in uh, Green Bay, um, maybe one or two that you're going to see a 93, 94 speed out of. Uh, nothing major. So um, if you want a quarterback, if you need a quarterback, if you need a wide receiver or a playmaker, uh, my advice would be to trade up and get it because I think they're going to go quick. Yeah, this is the year, like I said, to have a – well, as you can tell, by the, the, the trade market in our league has been pretty – very active in the last 48 hours or so. People are trying to – it's almost like a buy, buy, buy right now. Everybody's trying to buy picks, get picks, get picks. And we've seen a lot of moving. Um, and and in my, I guess I look at it as my strategy. I'm a big lineman guy in the draft. I love to get my offensive line. I got my skill position players. I love to build my offensive line through the draft. This would not be a draft for me. But to me, there's, there's, there's some linemen there. But like I said, it's a, it's a real skill position heavy one. But uh, I'm real big on, on offensive line, defensive line, really. I love to get those guys in the draft because those are really underrated guys. A lot of those guys slip through the cracks because people do look at the real flashy players. Um, but this draft, I think, is a top – I hate to say a top two-round draft because especially since I don't have a top two-round pick. Uh, but it is a top two-round, in my opinion, draft. Uh, I, I think that's why a bunch of guys are – are moving up. I see a lot of draft picks. Um, I guess it's just this season. You see a lot more buying than selling. Last couple of drafts, you've seen a, you've seen some few guys sell for reasons other than not making the draft. Um, but this season, I'm, I mean, everybody just buy, buy, buy. Everybody wants this thing, and I think that's a lot to tell about the first two rounds. I think it's going to be a lot of, I would say, superstar development players. But I think you're going to see some impact players in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I think you guys said it. This is the draft that we wish we would have seen year one. It would have been fun to see what did these players look like in season three, season four, season five. Like that would have been fun. This is the draft. I've kind of went back and forth in this because there's been some teams that have proved me otherwise, such as the Falcons, such as the Bengals, such as the Chargers, the Patriots. These are teams that were very winning teams that did not have that super stud. I mean, you guys had good quarterbacks, but I'm I'm talking about like that 
98 throwing power, mid 90s accuracy type of guy. Like none of you had that. The, these teams are winning with freaking Carson Palmer and Drew Brees was still a winning quarterback here. And like the so I've kind of went back to back and forth on this. Like I think that you can win with a lower rated quarterback if you play smart and you do it the right way. And so seeing these quarterbacks out there, I went after a quarterback after Jimmy had a, a very bad uh, postseason against the Falcons, uh, and I just got one so super cheap. Guys weren't spending on quarterbacks. Um, and this is the draft that if you want a good young star quarterback that you're going to start from day one, put all your XP in, do all your extra stuff in, this is the draft to do that. It is really, really loaded a quarterback. There's going to be a very good quarterback go in the third, fourth round. I mean, just mark my word for it. I think it's going to happen. Um, and there's going to be some good receivers. If you like drafts for that non-sexy pick like me, that those big, beefy offensive linemen, those big defensive linemen, this is not the draft for you. Um, and that's what I like to draft. I, I like to draft those big guys that can get up front, open up the holes, and do some fun things for your running backs. But if you want that sexy pick, this is kind of the draft to go do that and find those guys because they're going to be there. Um, and there is. There's a lot of movement of guys wanting to move up and move down. So it would be an interest. Drafts are always fun. I love the draft show, of course. Hopefully both of you guys will be on it. I got to talk to somebody, and they're helping me. Uh, I have a little draft board, keep that thing updated so that I can just do my thing and flow with the picks and talk about the players. But um, draft shows are always going to be a ton of fun, and draft nights, are you can never quite put your finger on what draft night's going to be like. You know what I mean? It's, it's just it's going to be a lot of fun, and there's going to be a lot of like, oh, hell, you took my player one pick before me or two picks before me, or I can't believe you did that. It's just so much fun to see that excitement build up and we all think we got it we got the team that's going to win the super bowl this is it and then that goes away by week four but uh, up to then we feel like that that's the point so here's my last question that we'll put a bow on this wrap it up for the night percentage of chance that a quarterback goes in the first three picks in this draft what do you guys think oh i i think that's a very good possibility I you know, I've, I'm pretty active as far as uh, off-season trading and moving picks and stuff. Um, just talking to the guys I've talked to, and I've talked to just about everybody, you're going to see quarterbacks go flying off the board. I, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw five, six quarterbacks in the top ten picks. Wow. Uh, it's just it, it, that it's like that. That would surprise me. Well, the Eagles are kind of a wild card. I mean, because, sure. you know, the plan for us, uh, just be fair about it, let the Eagles go ahead and uh, draft the player. We, we do have CP, an owner now, do it. finally. Yep. If I have an Eagles owner, got the team fixed, it'll be ready to go for him. Um, I think, you know, I don't think it's a big secret. When you look at the draft board, uh, it's got the wide receiver um, as the top-ranked player in the game on the actual board. Um, and the Eagles, I mean, who couldn't use a six six fast receiver? So, you know, he gets that, he's he's gonna be off and running. Um but he's yeah, it wasn't over a very good team. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great team and he's got every pretty much everybody uh that he had when the team, you know, uh got disassembled and, and they've got some XP. You know, you got players with ten thousand XP, so he's gonna have a good shot uh to make a run this year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not going to surprise me to see those quarterbacks come flying off the board. And I got to say the owners overall did, a, a, we had a couple of little bumps through free agency, but overall guys did a really, really good job of leaving protected players alone and not doing anything crazy during free agency. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We, we really, really appreciate that. It makes, uh, you know, going in and having to rebid on players for the Eagles and ask guys, it's just. We really appreciate it because it, it makes it a lot easier on us uh, just to keep moving forward. You guys did a great job. Dwayne, chances that a quarterback goes in the first three picks. Who day's throwing it out there? He thinks five or six are going in the first 10 to 15. Yeah, um, them first three picks, 
Oh, I know you got the Eagles. I think you got the Jets, the Seahawks, unless a trade has went that I haven't seen. Um, I don't really know. I think the Jets, of all three of them, the Jets going to pull a trigger on. I think I think Mo is pretty satisfied with Wilson. Um, but Wilson Will, I mean, Mo, I, he's but Mo is so unpredictable. I love you, Mo, but Mo feels some crazy stuff out of his hat. Um, but I think he's going to stick with Wilson, and and I imagine the Eagles going to stick with Wentz. Um, so I think the Jets. I do think the Jets take one, and kind of like who they said though. Uh, it's a quarterback driven league. Uh, people want that quarterback, and like and like you said, um, people come out of the off season with a lot of hope. You get a draft, you get a great young quarterback, and then the optimism is out the roof. You just you see Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, and uh, and unfortunately, some people, you know, after like you said, a few weeks, uh, the optimism goes away. But um, but everybody starting week one has that same goal, and like I said, when you get a quarterback, a young good quarterback, the optimism is even higher. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think uh, he, I think I actually think the Jets. If I had to make a prediction, the Jets will take a quarterback in the first uh, with that second pick. So here's the key: uh, I I definitely 100 percent want to get at least one more draft in after this one. It would be awesome if we could get two more in. I think that's really stretching it. I don't know that we'll be able to get there. I'm way too lazy to do the math, but um, helping. You know, you guys who are very plugged in with us, like, keep pushing out content, keep participating in the drafts, keep participating in the shows, keep talking about it in the chat, keep promoting what we're doing here, like, keep the energy up. I know that there are going to be, you know, five to ten guys probably that are going to die off during the summer. It always happens. It happens to every league out there. If you go to Daddy Leagues right now, click on the forums, all of the big full leagues that have been going and blowing all season are looking for owners. We're we're very active on Twitter. Every league out there is looking for people. It happens, okay? But at the same time, I want to keep some kind of momentum going. We've got other games for you guys to plug into. We've got the golf league. We've got the FIFA team, which is a ton of fun. We've got the coach mode league. I mean, there's a lot of things going. There's the WWE league that you can be a part of. Like there's a lot of things for you to plug in here and be a part of what we're doing, and we want you to do that. So help us keep the momentum going. Talk about your team. Write content. We all love to read it. I push it on the website. Make videos. Just push stuff out there. Keep the momentum high. And for the guys who are going to unplug, help us keep them plugged in with us, and we'll keep getting these games done and keep having a really good time. I also blasted out everyone's averages. For your feedback forms, there was about three owners who actually had no feedback forms. And I know we only started this, you know, most of the through the season. So this year we'll get the whole season. But you guys can help us out by just reminding each other, hey, don't forget to do your feedback form after the game. Just an easy little reminder. That way we can get that in. It's just an easy way for us to not only get feedback about how play is going in the league, see potential issues, but it's nice for me to go to you and say, Hey, out of 16 games, here's your average feedback. Like, this is what people think about you. So you can see, oh, man, I'm doing really good. People think, or, or hey, you know, maybe there's a connection issue. My, a lot of guys give my connection a, a bad rating. Maybe I need to look into that, you know. So these feedback forms help a lot of things, and they literally take 15 seconds. I mean, it takes no time at all. So help us out with that. Before we wrap it up, closing thoughts. It's been a great offseason looking for Really, really excited to a great draft tomorrow night. But closing thoughts from both of you guys. Yeah, I just, I just want to say uh, thank you guys. I, I personally really, really appreciate everybody um, being active and coming out like you did in free agency. Um, you're not going to find too many year-round leagues that stay full like we do and keep the hype going like we do. Uh, I'm going to be on for the draft show tomorrow. I think Wayne's going to be there chaotic's talking about uh, being there for most of it, trying to get Colin on. Um, I think the draft shows really what sets us apart. So if you haven't experienced it yet, uh, tune in. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You can call in, talk about your picks, talk about guys you missed on, uh, and just have a good time. Um, but, you know, we, we I, I do this uh, for you guys. Um, it's, there's a lot of stuff you don't see that we all do as far as editing and all all the dirty work that it, sometimes it takes hours. Um, but you know, we just, we do it just so we all, we can all hang out and have a, 
you know, that safe place uh, to, just, to just to escape to. Um, and and we just really appreciate you guys uh, helping helping us do that and being a part of the OMFL. Y'all just got me excited. Y'all talk about Chaotix and Colin might be on here tomorrow. That just might, oh, they might have made fun. my night, y'all saying that. Uh, yeah. yeah, like you said, um, I would love to see everybody as active all year as they were in free agency. I mean, like I said, this is a good group of guys. We're here to have fun. Now, I would love to see some of y'all. Um, like I said, I, I understand, you know, especially middle of the season. Um, the season's not going completely your way. You start maybe getting a little disinterested because it's not going the way you want. Stick it out. Like I said, we have other things you can do um, to, uh, I guess, just take it out and have fun. Like I said, the FIFA team, I have met. I ain't played FIFA in years. Um, love it. Absolutely love playing FIFA with the group of guys we play with. Um, like I said, we're here to have fun. Um, and, uh, and just like who they said, um, and they do, who they and Nate do, and Colin, all of them do crazy stuff, way more than I ever do. Um, like I said, it's just for y'all. Make it easy. It's, it's um, There's just a lot of stuff that goes on that they do that makes this world, uh, OMFL world, just go around. And, uh, yeah, I just appreciate everybody doing what they do. And like I said, we just like to see all y'all just as involved all year long as y'all are during free agency. Yep, it's been a great off season, and uh, my closing thoughts are just about the board. You know, we, I've over sixteen years. There's been a lot of good guys, and and a couple of uh, bad eggs that have come through the boardroom, much less the league, and uh, and really helped me. I mean, there's been commissioners that I've given this thing to when when I've gotten burned out, and so I have to admit though, this is one of the the my favorite boards that we've had. You know, you two have been two major additions to just the energy and the positivity and the hard work and the dedication to the guys that we've ever had. Uh, Colin really does such a great job with uh, being sturdy with guys and staying on top of guys and being a really nice dude and not, you know, treating them like children when it comes to scheduling. Um, Ziploc is really helping us with this draft board. Uh, Chaotic is super invested. We've just, we've got some good dudes here and, and I always want to be very respectful of that and very honor of that um i know that i did you know i may have been the lucky one who started this but this is not all carried by me um, i have a lot of really really great guys that help me do a lot of the dirty work now i try to pull my weight and i try to make sure that i'm working just as hard as everybody else and, and doing my part um, but there's no way i could do this by myself and uh, i just appreciate you two for being on the show and for everything that you do behind the scenes that no one knows anything about plus all the rest of the board you you guys are just good guys and and i really do um i don't you know this is just who i am as a person uh you know i i am very um i am a very faithful friend that'll fight to the death for for people that i believe in and uh man i love our guys here in the league and and the guys on the board and uh, these are my buddies and this is the way I, I choose to spend my hobby i'm very busy like everybody and i have a family and so this is my little hobby and uh you guys make this a whole lot of fun so now that the lovey dovey kissy huggy stuff is all over and finished let's uh let's get ready for a fun draft tomorrow night thank you guys for being on the show fellas for all of the omfl board and leadership here in the grown folks thank you for listening to the show tonight we will see you tomorrow night pre-draft show starts 30 minutes before the draft we'll see you then deuces tune in guys thanks Make